Harbin, a Chinese city with a Russian feel. That's racist. But we're going to watch it for you guys. Hello, and welcome to Harbin. It's the coldest city in Dongbei, and it's currently minus 25 degrees. Wait, wait, wait. Why is she speaking in English? She has Chinese subtitles. I don't need this English. Grace. <sighs> Hey dad, where are you guys? We're in Beijing, around 30 degrees. Hey, Jesus. Mom, quick question, what's the temperature of our freezer at home? Uh, it's about minus 18 usually. Well, I am currently in a place seven degrees colder than our- Wait, minus 18 Celsius or Fahrenheit? This is important information. I'm American, it's important. Freezer. Oh my gosh. Well, oh I'll my gosh. The there's, there's, there's a city in Japan that's also like Russian. That's because it's right next to Russia. The main reasons I wanted And it's very cold. To visit. Oh, it's Russian. It says Pushi Pussy? It says Pushi is Rossi. Rossi. It's like Russia. Something something and the Russia? I, I don't know, bro. My Russian sucks. That Harbin is its very unique cultural heritage. Believe it or not, this city was once a thriving cosmopolitan. Oh, that looks so Russian. Russian culture. Russian culture. Oh, Rasprad Mashupa Mashura. Okay, my parents are Russian, okay, technically. Soviet, former Soviet Union. So I should be able to read everything here, but I'm a dumbass, so I can't. The influence of Russia came in the late 18th century with the construction of the China Eastern Railway, which was an extension of the Trans-Siberian Railway. <laughs> Obviously. China with Siberia. And if yeah. you're wondering where Harbin fits into all of this, well, there's Harbin right there, right in that massive intersection. That's uh, Kumamoto, where I, I lived in Japan, but the subtitles are, uh, subtitles are blocking it. So basically, Harbin went from being in the middle of nowhere to the middle of everything. Oh my god. The largest commercial center Sorry. of Northeast Asia. <laughs> Behind me here is Harbin Railway Station as it looks today. It's already 120 years old. Damn, that looks cool. Good looks good. very, uh, looks very communist with its red. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of weird. Thousands of Russian engineers, railway builders, employees. Russia, whoa. I feel like I could be in Russia. Yeah, it does look like St. Petersburg or something. There are also a lot of French and Baroque style buildings here. So Harbin is also often referred One, two, to four. as the Oriental Paris. Isn't Oriental like a bad thing to say nowadays? <laughs> is it actually referred to that as, as Oriental Paris nowadays? I'm currently walking down Zhongyang Dajie or Zhongyang Street. Oh, it says Plitsa Shunyan's uh, that's it says Zhang Yang Street. And it's probably the most obvious legacy of Russia's involvement with Harbin. The first thing I'm noticing walking down the street is that every second person is eating an ice cream, which seems a little strange to me. Let's look it up. Is ice cream a thing in who oh, what was the place called? I forgot. Harbin. Harbin. You can find this ice cream at the city crowd. But the iconic stall is placed in Zhongyang Street. There are several flavors you can choose from. <laughs> you know, I ate ice cream when it was cold in Japan, and, and people looked at me like, what the hell's wrong with you? It tasted good. You see, Harbinians understand uh, how I would be. I wonder how many people get sick in the city, too. Harbin, sick people. That doesn't, that doesn't sound right. I'll look this up on my own time. But I guess the convenient thing is here, no freezer is needed. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Bye, Blondie. That's offensive. And she's smiling at that offensive... Jesus Christ. You should punch that woman in the face. She was referring to your hair because she thinks you're dumb. You're just going to take it? You're just going to take it like the foreigner you are? It's messed up. You tell her that you're not just a Blondie. That you have a heart. You have a life. <sighs> Disgusting. You know what they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Can't help but feel to live. You're not in Rome. No wonder you're blonde. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh, that's a Russian guy. A lovely loaf of Russian bread. Oh, that looks good. I stopped eating bread and cheese because I was gaining weight from it and I didn't feel that good from it. Now I want it again. You know what this bread needs? It needs some sausage. Uh. Conveniently. That's not kosher. Harbin sausage is another notable product. They're known as red sausage or hong chang, and I've heard they tend to be a lot more European tasting than other Chinese sausages. Well, now does I got it? the sausage and I got it. It does bread. look good. I don't like sausages, and it actually looks good. <laughs> Let's make this happen. Much better. Match made in heaven. 
the dryness <laughs> of the bread complements and the moistness of this sausage pan. Oh, it's moist? <laughs> Perfectly. It's got a really lovely smoky taste that I'm Sorry. enjoying a lot. I'm here uh, in a very unique yeah. bar made entirely of ice. Even my little shot glass here is made of ice. And of course, when in the Oriental Moscow, gotta have some Russian vodka. Uh, that's it obvious. That's... that's <laughs> As, <laughs> what was in her teeth? Jesus. What's in your teeth? I hope she's okay. As many of you also know, Harbin is very famous for one other thing, the Snow and Ice Sculpture Festival. Oh it's my god. At the moment, so join Bro. the next video as I go check it out. That's literally exactly, th th this is, this reminds me exactly of a, of a Hokkaido in Japan. Very Russian influenced and they have a Snow and Ice Festival. And I, I've been there. That's actually crazy. I don't know if they eat ice cream, but. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nothing wrong with being gay, bro.